So probably over here, um, whatever shows the hinge best. I mean, I can. Yeah, you can see yeah. it moving right here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's definitely that's definitely our issue, and yeah. and there's some screws underneath this yes. piece that we can, we're going to access and see if we can tighten that up. Yeah. Yeah. And that's almost a maintenance item. Yeah. In a exactly. Way. Yeah, it is. It is. Hey everybody, I'm Randy, and this is Zephyr Travels, and I've got a special guest with us. This is Phil, the door guy, and he's going to take a look at our door. We've got a couple of little issues. I think the biggest thing I've noticed is the door sitting out just a little bit and not sealing tightly. When we um, are inside, you can look down on the bottom, you can actually see daylight through it. So that was originally what concerned me, but Vils looked at it a little bit already. And he's noticed that one of our hinges is loose, which is a very common loose hinge problem. So we're going to take care of that. I'm going to try not to slow Phil down too much, but <laughs> I probably will. No, it's fine. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so Phil, how long have you been doing this? I've been doing this for the oh, about two and a half years. Two and a half years. Like okay. That. I mean, as you know, as traveling around to the rallies and helping people yeah. out and things like that. So. It just kind of evolved, you know, as people found out that we had the ability to fix the doors, you know, you don't have to take it in, you don't have a two month wait at the dealership and that type of thing. So um, it's a, it's kind of a service and a lot of people seem to appreciate it. And we absolutely appreciate everyone that's allowed right. us to work on their door. So. Right. And I'm, I'm guessing that a lot of you out there who have Airstreams probably already know of Phil because he's been on Wander Locals videos and that's kind of where people got to meet, meet exactly. you at the first time. Exactly. Yes. Um, so that's awesome. Yeah. And you, 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 you're a constant thinker. I mean, you've always come up with different yeah. solutions for different things, yeah. and that's one of the, the neat things. Now, now, Phil and I, we run into each other at least at least every year at the rally, yeah. and we probably at least spend an hour and a half, couple hours just catching up on each yeah. other and things, because we both have the same model Airstream, so yeah. we kind of go through, what did you do to yours, and what did yeah. you do to our, yeah. mine, and everything. So it's, it's, it's been a lot of fun doing it, that. It has, yes. And, uh, and that's how we all learn, is just sharing ideas among our community. You yeah. Know? So, yeah, I absolutely. mean, none of us are experts at no. everything. We all know no. a little bit, yep. and when we talk back and forth, we pick up a little bit more, yep. and we go, oh, that's a better way than I did it, yep. and oh, I shouldn't have done that. And one of the things that, uh, in our training, that uh, one of my mentors told us, he said, we all have islands of knowledge. Yeah. And you have knowledge, I have knowledge, you know, the next guy has knowledge. And he said, if you can link those islands together, then that knowledge becomes, you know, much more vast. And I yeah. just think that was a great way of explaining that. And that's kind of what it is about our community. I mean, when we link our islands of knowledge together, we all learn and we can share with other people. That's know? a great so, way to put it. Yeah, it's it great. is. Yeah. Yep. So, all right. So well, let's get started. I don't okay. want to slow you down too much more because. This has been the busiest guy at the rally. I know he has. <laughs> you had a table set up, yeah. and he stopped traffic in the vendor area pretty much all day. Yeah, it so. was uh, it was very busy. We're <laughs> we're blessed to have a lot of good friends. Yes, so, yes, yes, absolutely. Yes. Well, we'll get on it and see what we can do. Okay, so, sounds good. All right, great. So what we're going to do is check the check the hinges here. Of course, we already know that Randy has a loose hinge. Yeah. You can see that hinge moving right there, and. Randy made a good point. It's almost like it's almost like a maintenance item, if you will. So these little decorative covers right here, they're just held on with adhesive tape. And so what we're gonna do is just run a run a knife behind them here and get the tape broke loose. And we're gonna remove them. So you can really see that this screw is oh, backed wow. out a long Look way right here. Yes. So hopefully it will tighten. This is all just residue from the yeah from the little cover. But look, look. I mean, I look. I can turn that with my hand. Yeah. That's how loose that screw is. Yep. So. So that they're going to tighten up so that's a good sign but what we're going to do is loosen them just mm -hmm. a little bit and what hap what needs to happen randy is we need to lift up on this to get the any oh, to get know, the alignment right yeah any droop out of it and then tighten it it's almost a two-person job yep, yep. So. so we can set the camera aside okay and do that. so what we're going to do now is just tension the door upward to the best that we can and then we're going to tighten the screws so Looks like these are going to tighten up good. Well, actually, this bottom one's not. Uh-oh. 
No, nope, that one's not going to tighten, Randy. It's okay. Yep, sure enough. So let's get this top one. It's So it grabbed well. The top one grabbed well and see the door stayed where it's at. However, this bottom one um, is definitely going to need some future maintenance because that is that is a concern right there. So, but we can go ahead with the alignment and everything that we got and see if we can get your door closing better. And I know you mentioned something about possibly doing it at a later time or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. So, so what's what's going on here is we've got again. A capture plate back behind there with yes. a couple of nuts on it. Yes. And on the bottom one, the, the weld on the nut is broken, so it's just spinning. Yeah. Now the top one's fine, and yeah. that was able to be tightened. But to fix this, we've got to come in from the back side. Yes. Which means there's a, there's a piece of trim in there. We'll remove that, and then we will find the exact point of this and put a small hole. Yes. That you can get a tool in there, mm -hmm. and we can get at that and yeah. tighten but it up because the fastening hardware for these bolts are between the inner skin and the outer skin. Right. So, I mean, from Airstream, it's not accessible. So what you have to do, you have to drill an access hole for it. And uh, it's, a, it's a very common process. And once we drill the hole and you put the trim strip back up, you never see the hole. I mean, right. it's just a cosmetic thing, you know, when you first do it, it's, it worries people, but I can tell you we've we've done this many times. I know Airstream's done it, dealers do it. It's just what it's you just do. the way it it's is. It's just the way it works. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And that could be the same problem here, it could be on the upper hinge too. That's correct. Um, That's we're correct. Just happen to have a loose one on one hinge, yep. but it could be both. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So now we can look at moving your striker and see if we can get your door to close a little better. Sounds so, good. All right, great. That's a So one of the things you're concerned about is that there's a backing plate that's riveted in there and you don't want that to just drop exactly. down. That's a big problem. Exactly. So we are going to have to open this up just a little bit. See, the hole is, is large enough because this bolt needs to be moved in. The hole is large enough, but we're setting right down in the corner right here. Yeah. So we're going to have to take just a little bit of this material right here out with the Dremel in order for this to move back. So, um, and then to move it, you've got to put the bolt back in and take the rivets out so the whole plate slides. Correct. If, if you don't get anything else out of this video, this is an important thing right here. Of course, this is called the striker bolt that I'm screwing in. You can have the striker bolt in and the rivets out, or you can have the rivets in and the striker bolt out. Just don't ever have both the rivets and the striker bolt out at the same time. Yeah. Because there is a plate in here in the door frame that has a nut welded to it that we're actually screwing this bolt into. And those, that, those rivets, the sole purpose of those is to keep that plate intact in place. And without those, it can drop down in the frame. Yeah. And most of the time they're retrievable. We fished them out with fishing line and magnets and different things. Uh, but it's just better not to ever let that happen. So we're gonna try to prevent that. Yeah, so. yeah, good idea. See if we can move this guy in. Sometimes part of that rivet shank will set in there a little bit, so you got to make sure that you get it out completely. Right. See, yeah, I think that bottom one. I can still see the top right here. Is this? I'm gonna get a little pick and see if I can't knock that out. That's what's holding it. Yeah, you can see just a little bit of the rivet right there. Yeah. Got the top. 
top one but the bottom one still. There it goes. Yeah. There it let it go. So as you can see, that's how much side to side play you have. Right. So we're gonna maximize it to the back. We'll keep pressure on it. Yeah. Is our starting point to see if that's enough. Exactly. Or? Well that you can hear the plate hitting on the inside. Yeah. So we may not be able to get too much more play out of it. Um, but you can see you can see the witness mark there where the where the striker was mm -hmm. and uh, it, it has definitely moved in some. So let's see how it closes. And it still it still needs to go in more. I'm just not sure it's gonna allow us. So now that you've taken the rivets out, now you've got to be very careful right. how much you, you loosen you, that you up. You can loosen it, you just don't want to... Remove it. Yeah, exactly. It's a bad day if you remove it. Yeah. So what we're going to do, we're going to put one rivet back in, and we'll take a little bit of that material out yes. and see if we can get this striker to move back further. So, Because again, now that the rivets are out, you need to put one back in there not to lose that plate. Yep. So. So what we're going to do now is just put one rivet back in here just to hold that plate intact while we remove the striker bolt. And you can see yeah, that popped right yeah, up. Yeah, and see now the bolt, now the plate's intact. So we can take this out comfortably and do a little work in there. So we can get a little bit of side to side movement on this plate. And I usually just use a Dremel with a little carbide wheel or carbide cutter on it. So. back out. It moved back some more. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you got quite a bit there. Push against it. Watch out, Saffer. Yeah, that definitely pulled it in some. Yep. It's not enough, but. We don't have as much there to work with as we did. Right. So. Well, it's just going to be the same process over. We're just going to have to grind, take, the, grind, take the rivet. Yeah. Put yep. the rivet back in. Yep. Grind yep. a little bit more yep. up. And I'm going to get a new wheel here too, and uh, okay, see if we can't make it cut a little. Now we got that all loose again. Yeah. Yeah, you can see the witness marks. Yes. You've got a yes. lot more. We've we've made some ground on it, but now you can hear it hitting in the back mm -hmm. side. I mean that's all we're gonna get out of it. Yeah. So whatever we've gained here. That's nice and tight. Make sure them rivets are out. That one is. Yeah. 
like just like it was. What we got going on here. Yeah. So one of the issues that we had here was the door wasn't sealing too well at the bottom. So as we showed previously, we moved the striker over a little bit, you know, took the rivets out, and we, we made some ground there. The door closes a little bit better, and it also closes a little bit tighter. But something also to watch on your doors is this gasket right here. And I don't know how well it's going to show, Randy, but can you see this gap right here? Yeah. Uh, so this gap, this gasket can actually be pulled this way, and there would be no gap right here. So yeah. more like this. See how the gasket is overlaying the edge of the door, so I'm pushing it back. So this is a this is the, actually how the gasket should look. But sometimes when they get installed, see they start to move over here a little bit. Now it comes back this way a little bit. Now it's going back that way a little bit. Yeah. I mean this stuff just gets applied by hand, so you you know it's just the way it is. But you can see it really up yes, in here you quite can. a bit. Yes, you can. So yeah. when you get a new gasket. If you just are cautious and be real mindful and keep it right up to this edge because this is your ceiling surface on your door frame and the doors as you we showed you know you could see that it wasn't quite making contact so yeah. every bit out this way and on the that gasket over on that side every bit to oh well know. here we've got a lot yes you you have a large amount over here and you can tell that it's actually sealing. I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but it's sealing out here on this very outer edge. It's just barely catching. It, it does look like it's sealing, but if this gasket was moved over, then it would be catching more in the center. So, right, and, and I'm sure if this gasket's in the right place and it gets more contact surface, that's going to steady the door when you're going down the road, and it's going to it prevent will. other problems. It will. You know, dust intrusion and things. We've all yep. arrived at our campground, and you think, where did all that dust come from? Yeah. You know, and well. and a, even probably the hinges loosening up. If you've got the set ceiling correctly, it's not moving. It's not shaking these hinges right. as much. It's, it's more of a cushion for the Yes. Door. Yes. No, yeah. that's exactly right. So, I mean, I think All right, Phil, I really appreciate you coming over and taking a look at our door. It is much better. And now there's a few things that we couldn't do today that it was going to take more time. Right, right. Um, or some additional materials. So yeah. you mentioned replacing the gasket, and that's something that I can do later. Sure. And the one stud here that's spinning, that's a little more involved job that we will attack at another day. Right, right. Um, but we, we made some great improvements. The door is much tighter. Um, I don't think I've got the gap at the bottom that I did. Yeah. Um, the gasket will definitely help that when I put the new gasket in, but we've definitely made great improvements and I appreciate it. Well, when you, when you relay the gasket, and when I say relay, I'm talking about reposition mm -hmm. is a better word. Um, you can actually pull that over to co help cover that void a little bit. That'll help you down here. But again, it's like you said, it's going to create a more of a cushion. I mean, your trailer's a 2017 so yeah. the gasket I mean it's well used it's, yeah. it's in good shape and you've kept good care of it um, and along those terms Randy um, I mean I'm just a um, fill in today or you know happen to be able to be on your video we're subscribers and we appreciate what you do you know your you your content and a lot of the things you do your in-depth knowledge and stuff uh, the subscribers appreciate it I appreciate it so well, thank all, you Phil always watching and uh, it's always a pleasure you know but thank again you. I appreciate being being able to come down and just give you a little bit of hand and uh, with your expertise you're going to be able to finish this up at home no worries so. <laughs> all right so um, if someone wants you you know has an airstream and they want to get a hold of you to work on it. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously you're in some part of the country, right. but you do travel around in your airstream and you go to the major shows like this is the international. Right. Um, but how would someone get a hold of you and get some time with you if you know and meet you someplace? So the best way to get a hold of me, I mean, we do all of our business in a very antiquated method. I'll be the first to admit that. Uh, we don't have a website or anything. I don't do much on Facebook Messenger because we're so busy. The best way to get a hold of me is email me. Okay. And so my email address is nolocksolution at gmail.com. But you're correct. That's what we do. I mean, we travel around to rallies. I mean, we're leaving here. We're headed back home. And then from home, we're headed to Illumapalooza to the big event at Jackson Center. Right. Uh, we've got uh, two or three more rallies scheduled for this year. And... Uh, we're already taking appointments for Sedalia, Missouri next year. I literally already have appointments to meet people <laughs> so, there. So if, so if you're going to the international rally next year, definitely uh, get a hold of Phil if you want him to look at your door then. Now, because he may get yeah. fucked up. I mean, we were lucky that 
you were able to squeeze us in at the after the rally yeah. time that you were we happen to both be here yeah. but yeah. Uh, yeah this has worked good because I mean a lot of the crowd's gone and things yep. it's a little more laid-back environment and definitely as always uh, love sharing ideas with you and talking about our 28s and stuff so yeah always something new you know <laughs> so just one one question and sure and I kind of think I know the answer to this okay how did you get started was it just fixing things on your trailer and coming up with solutions? You are 100% correct. I thought so. So, I mean, the same things that gives, you know, all of us Airstreamers heartburn gave me heartburn. You right. Know? So, we just looked at different methods, you know, what I felt like worked better. I do have a decent mechanical background and we just, it just blossomed into this because people's like, well, you know, would he, would he look at mine, you know, and would yeah. he sell me this? And that's kind of how we started. Yeah. And uh, so... I mean, we enjoy going around my wife. I, I don't want to forget to give her credit. She is literally 60% of our operation. <laughs> I won't say half because I give her total credit for what she does. She's a real blessing to me. And, and, and uh, she, you're right. She doesn't get the credit that she deserves because most people who just know her as the door guy's wife. That's exactly right. <laughs> and, and, I'm the, and, and I feel so bad when I, you know, no, when, I, when I see her yeah. and, I'm, and I can't think of her name Rochelle, right away. Rochelle. Rochelle. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm thinking that's the door guy's wife. Yeah. But, yeah, well, she's know. gaining a little notoriety as that's we move good. along because people's realizing that I'm not the, <laughs> I, I, I'm not the sole player in this. So that's good. Yeah. Well, Randy, it's been a pleasure. I hope uh, hope this works out good for you, and uh, keep me posted on your progress. I will. So, okay. I definitely will. Thank, Thank you, you very Phil. much. Appreciate it. So, if I will post Phil's information in the description below, um, you can get a hold of him that way. And until the next time, everybody, we'll see you guys down the road. Take care.